Today, we're going to be rebuilding the worst team in Premier League history. That's right, we'll be taking over at Derby County, who currently find themselves in League One and have the worst ever individual season in the history of the Premier League. If you don't know the story, it was around 2007, Derby got 11 points in the Premier League, which is a pretty significant distance off even the second worst season. So they have had an abysmal time last time they were in the top flight. Since that relegation, Derby have found themselves in the Championship Famously, they were very close to getting promoted in the playoffs under Frank Lampard with some great players in on loan. But since then, things have really fallen off and they found themselves dropping into the third division of English football. This is a team that has plenty of history in the first division of England, winning the league twice in the 70s and winning an FA Cup also. And in today's rebuild, we're going to try and drag Derby from League One to the Premier League in five seasons. We'll be focusing only on the transfers, trying to make the right calls to improve this team. But before we get started, if you you guys could keep smashing your support on the channel I'd massively appreciate it if you could just take a few seconds to hit that like button it's free to do and it really does help my videos in terms of YouTube thinking they're good and then pushing them out to more people if you're in this percentage of people watching who haven't yet hit the subscribe button it would really help if you would as we try and push for 20k subs and comment down below who you want to see rebuilt next and with that being said Let's get stuck into it, shall we? First thing to note are our facilities, which are actually in a pretty decent state. The training facilities, the youth facilities, the coaching and the recruitment are looking good. As far as League One teams go, our staff situation is in a very good position. And the season preview has us in third place behind Sheffield Wednesday and Ipswich. So technically, we're the third best team in the league. Our best rated player isn't at the club. Christian Bialik is out on loan at Birmingham in the championship. Outside of that, our best player is Craig Forsyth at left back. But there are some potential future future stars in our team like Cashin who's came through in the Derby Academy, an Irish international by the name of Jason Knight who's been with the club for many a year now and is settling into that midfield role. Louis Sibley also looks very talented with lots of potential and he's wanted by some big clubs. And finally we've got Max Bird as well, another great academy product with a great future. So thankfully we have got some great young talent in the team and I think we need to direct our thanks at Wayne Rooney because he as manager of Derby did bring through a lot of young players kind of out of necessity if he didn't know Derby had a big points deduction a couple of years ago lots of financial troubles and weren't really able to bring players in and speaking of finances things look okay now we've got four million pounds in the balance and in terms of the debts and loans there's only a very small amount of transfer debt transfer budget there isn't much so I think for the first year we're just going to simulate ahead with the team that we've got see how we get on and from there we'll really kick on with our rebuild so hopefully we can get off to a great start and get in the championship because it won't be easy to get to the Prem in five years and we've actually underperformed expectations a little bit in our first year predicted to come third in the league we actually finished sixth on 76 points which did put us into the playoffs where in the semi-final we did beat Charlton to get into the final however unfortunately we did lose to Bolton and we will be staying in league one for another season which certainly isn't great news we were knocked out in the FA Cup in the third round by Man U Carabao Cup knocked out in the third round by City some tough draws there and the Papa John's trophy let's not even talk about that this is a tactic we ended up using during the course of a season I went for a 4-3-3 obviously some players didn't actually play for us the likes of Bayek were actually on loan but if we look at our best 11 supposedly of players we have at the club this is the kind of team we would have been running with on most occasions and a lot of these are currently on loan our best performer was a Norwich loanee by the name of Tony Springett who I don't think we're going to have for another season and he wasn't even crazy impressive he was just half decent our centre back and legend of the club Curtis Davis is retiring at the end of the season and he was our second best player so we've got overperforming loanies that we need to replace and also legends of the team that we need to replace as well this is not going to be easy in our first transfer window but hopefully we can sort things out and have a much better year in season two so we needed to improve the team but we were on a budget so I had to make the best calls possible with the money that we've had so firstly we picked up James Furlong another Irish player to add into our team a 21 year old left back to offer competition in that position he's been on loan at Motherwell from Brighton had a good year there so hopefully he can settle into our team. We brought in another loanee for this season, Ian Perveda. He comes in on loan from Leeds. He was in the championship last year. Doesn't look like he's up to that level just yet, but hopefully the 23-year-old can contribute in League One. Our striker options were quite limited, so we have loaned in 21-year-old Kyle Joseph from Swansea, who I'm hoping will be able to lead the line. Might be a little bit early for him, but he was good for Oxford last year in League One, so maybe in our team he can score even more. We actually spent some money on a player 
player, which I don't usually do in the lower divisions. I try and stick to loans and free transfers. But the scouts seem to highly recommend Armstrong Oco Flex of West Ham. And we went for him. He had a loan in the championship last season where he didn't really settle. He's never really got a chance anywhere, but we've paid £500,000 for a player that is clearly quite talented, valued at more than what we paid for him. And hopefully he can contribute on the pitch in a variety of positions. We've also bought in another free agent in the centre-back spot. His name is Kelland Watts. He's a 23-year-old, 6'4 Englishman who we've got after being released from Newcastle, was in League One last year with Peterborough. Hopefully he can step up for the mark for us and offer us some competition in that centre-back position. Maybe our best signing, though, is a goalkeeper by the name of Nathan Baxter who comes in from Chelsea, having been released. He was in the Championship last year and looked pretty good for Hull. I think in real life he's just signed for Bolton. But he's a real coup for a League One team, I think. If you look at him as a keeper at the age of 24. It's very hard to attract a goalkeeper like this to this level, but he's decided to join. We've given him a fairly big contract compared to some other players, and hopefully he'll be our number one for a few seasons yet because he can keep getting better. And then we finished off our transfers by spending £250,000 on a left back by the name of Tom Pierce. He comes in from Wigan in the Championship, another good left back. He'll be competing with James Furlong in that position. It was an area that we were particularly weak in. I think he's definitely a League One quality player and hopefully can help this team to towards promotion. Just going to quickly scroll through the team depth so you can get an idea of who we've got. It's Baxter and Wildsmith in the net. We've got Rooney and Corey Smith at right back. Maybe we'll need to recruit someone there soon. Bayek will be coming back for this season alongside Cashin and Watts. Pearson Furlong at left back as we mentioned earlier. Plenty of midfield options. On the wings as well we're looking quite stacked and then up front it looks like Oco Flex and Joseph will be competing for that starting spot. And our best 11 is looking a lot stronger. A balance around the whole team. Less players on loan as well which is something that we wanted only Ian Pervader and Kyle Joseph are in this year on a loan deal and hopefully we can start bringing in players that really stick around at the club that we can build around but our team is ready for season two hopefully this is good enough to get into the championship and then we can really kick on with the rebuild from there and this season we have done it I mean it was a very close run thing because we were only four points off a title we were far better than any team in the playoffs yet we ended up in the playoffs and had to go all the way to the final against Peterborough won two one and that meant we got promoted on 95 points. I would have liked to have gone up in an automatic promotion place with how well we did this year but Huddersfield and Colchester kept us going but thankfully our on loan striker Kyle Joseph was unbelievably good considering he doesn't look like the world's best player. At 22 he's bagged 25 goals in 40 games which helped us get promotion and was easily the key component in our team. Knocked out in the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup but the Papa John's trophy is ours. We're taking away the pizza trophy beating Swindon for 3-2 in the final of that competition. Oco Flex and the South African Bart Husen helping us there get that trophy. So we've done really well this year. Promotion and a Papa John's trophy, which is nice to add to the cabinet. Even though it's not the biggest trophy in the world and I would have preferred to have won the league, we'll certainly take it. Carl Joseph, as mentioned, was phenomenal, as was Bayek and Cashin, two players now that are starting to be way better than League One level. Hopefully they will stick with us in the championship though. We've got some great players in this side. Nathan Baxter playing lots of football this year and getting better in the goal. We're ready to go for season three. We've been given five million pounds and 80 grand of wage budget to spend in the championship, which is a hell of a lot of money. And hopefully we can put it to use. So it's time for season three. I think our aim for the first season in the championship should be just to stay up. And I think by the looks of it, the season preview seems to suggest we should be fairly safe in mid-table. Just to show you as well, we've gone into the championship and Nathan Baxter is considered the best goalkeeper in the championship. So it shows you how good of a signing he was. But we've made some extra signings this year to help out our team. First, after a decent loan spell with us, Ian Paveda is joining permanently on a free deal. Leeds didn't want to offer him a contract. He was available as a free agent and we've picked him up. And nothing else, he'll be some depth on the wings, but he was good in League One. Hopefully he can take that step up into the championship with us. We spent £350,000 on a Guinean centre-back by the name of Toti, who comes in from Wolves. He's been on loan at Hanover last year in the Bundesliga and looked really good there when he did play. He even got some Premier League football for Wolves at one point in this simulation. So I feel like in the championship, he should settle really nicely. 350 k doesn't seem like the most money in the world either. He comes in as one of our best options at centre-back. He's left-footed and I think he's a great option for us in that area. I did mention we were light at right back last season so I decided to spend the big chunk of our money on a right 
right back, spending 700k to sign Blackpool's Jordan Gabriel, who I'm hoping will settle in in our team. He's got the physical attributes to be good at right back. He's got a long throw. He's a decent crosser. He can get forward as well as defend. I feel like he will be a great player for us. Wages are on the higher side, but we're in the championship now and we can afford to pay that. To back him up at right back, we've got Harrison Ashby on loan from Newcastle, who they signed from West Ham. Been on loan in the championship for a couple of years and done well. So hopefully he'll do well for us in the championship yet again. With him and Gabriel at right back, that does give us some good competition in that area. Two very good players who can push each other to the limits. And we did need a striker for this season. So we've gone to Chelsea and we've taken an 18 year old English striker by the name of Jimmy Jane Morgan, who they signed from Southampton in real life under this new Todd Bowley era. He was out on loan at Hull last season and didn't do great, but I see a player in him. I definitely think he's someone that could be a good striker for us. He's got the attributes there. He's 18 now, ready for some first team football and hopefully he can really kick on in a derby shirt. The report's saying he's only a good Sky Bet League One player, but I feel like his attributes might suggest otherwise. So for the season, this is going to be our best team. It'll be Baxter in goal, Gabriel at right back with Toti and Cash in at centre back with Pierce on the left, Bayek in midfield with Bird and Knight. You will see I've adjusted the tactic a little bit to drop Christian Bayek into this defensive role behind our players. I think he just covers our defence well and we're going to need to defend a little bit more heavily here in the championship. Pervade on the right, Sibley on the left and Jimmy J Morgan up front. It's not a team that's full of squad depth so hopefully we'll be okay in the championship this year. We need to stay up and then build from there but let's see how we do in season three. And it's exactly what was predicted of us. We were predicted mid-table. We finished there on 66 points, way clear of any relegation places. Colchester who came up with us go straight down but we managed to stay up. We're quite a while away from any kind of playoff position but certainly not the worst first season. Won more games than we lost. Disappointing in the cup competitions but we'll certainly take this for our first year in the championship. In terms of our top performers, Christian Bayek of course was one of the best as was Gabriel and Baxter Toti as well so it looks like our sign-ins have worked out quite nicely. Jimmy J Morgan as well ended up with 21 goals this year so clearly he was ready for that step up into the championship. He was our top goal scorer. We weren't the kind of team that were going to score loads of goals this year with the players that we've got but we did more than enough to finish mid-table. It's exactly what we needed and now we can kick on in our fourth year. We've only got two years left of this rebuild to get into the Premier League so hopefully we'll be able to do it next season. In terms of our budgets we're not getting as much as we did last year but hopefully with the players we've got now there's less work to do. I feel like we've got some good players in there we just need to add some extra stars on top of them and I certainly think we added that quality to the team but that only came because we made a few major sales so I will get into them in a second but if you are enjoying the video up to this point please do hit that subscribe button I'd really really appreciate it and subscribe if you want to see more like this but yes we have lost our most talented player Christian Bayek it was always going to happen he had a release clause for teams in a higher division than us Middlesbrough have activated it 4.7 mil for a player that's been so consistent it's a big shame to lose him but five million pounds is a lot of money to reinvest into the team but not as much money as 10 million pounds which is what we got for Max Bird another one that Middlesbrough have decided to take offers he wanted to leave to go play in the Premier League it was hard to stand in his way he's came through the Derby Academy and we've made 9.25 million with the potential for that to increase to 11.25 he's a player that was a great servant to us could play a variety of roles good on both feet and was really becoming a leader in this team a homegrown one at that but he wanted the move we took the cash and we reinvested it across our whole squad and there's a lot of signings to get through so I'm gonna move through them quickly but one of our best players we signed was Daniel Ruiz a Colombian 23 year old who comes in as one of the best players in the championship he's been on loan at Santos playing for Millonarios in Colombia he didn't extend his contract with them and we were able to get him on an approach to sign deal after a great season for them and I really do think he could lead us to a potential promotion charge our striker for this season is Leeds' is Joe Gelhart coming in on loan from the Premier League side for £650,000 for the season a striker with a lot of ability a lot of potential works hard and is clearly a championship level player so hopefully he can do the business for us Nat Phillips has been bought in on a loan deal from Bournemouth currently a Liverpool player in real life he's been playing in the championship for Bournemouth and then in the Prem but didn't adjust to the Prem very well so we were able to get him on a loan a very good quality centre-back who comes in as one of our best and speaking of centre-backs from Liverpool that we've got in on loan we've gone for Reese Williams as well in this world he did have a year in a championship with Luton where he did particularly well it's been a few years since then he's developed as a player whilst being at Liverpool and we've signed him on a loan deal I think he looks great 24 years of age so isn't yet at his best and I 
I think he could be a top signing for us on loan. We bought in an experienced player and some extra depth at right back signing Cedric, formerly of Arsenal, Southampton, Inter Milan, even Norwich here. He's came in on a free deal after a season out in the Russian Premier League. I think he could be good for us. You need some old players to balance out with the youth and I think Cedric is certainly someone that fits that bill. Another player from Liverpool on loan, Tyler Morton, has came in. He's going to play that defensive midfield position that's been left by Christian Bayek. A good passer who's got years to get better yet. More of a depth option than anything, but certainly a very handy player to have. But a very good permanent signing that we have completed is Antonio Nusa, a Norwegian under-21 international with six under-21 goals who comes in from Club Bruges for only three and a half million. Never really got a crack at it for them in the Belgian Premier League, but for us, I'm hoping he'll do a great job. A player that's already one of our best with potential to get better. With him and Ruiz on opposite flanks, we've got two good young options there who can get far better than they are right now. I feel like the transfer fee that we paid for him compared to his value, 3.5 mil to 9 million, that seems like a great deal in my eyes. Someone that can finish and create chances. Antonio Nusa is in our squad. And finally, we have signed Kasper Kozlowski from Brighton for 3.3 million. He's been out on loan in the championship with Stoke where he did well and in the Eredivisie with Vitesse where it didn't quite work out for him. A Polish international with 10 appearances, clearly someone that's got a big future ahead of him, a great passer who can work hard, he can dribble well, good physically as well, can play a few positions and definitely becomes one of our best midfielders now. And now we're looking like a very strong championship team with Baxter in goal, Gabriel, Totti, Cashin and Pierce at the back, Morton, Kozlowski and Knight in the midfield but the forward line is looking dangerous now with Nusa, Ruiz and Gelhar as our forward positions. We predicted 8th this year which was better than the 10th place prediction I think we got a couple of seasons ago but hopefully we can outperform that. So season 4, our second season in the championship, can we make it out of the second division? And our huge transfer overhaul has paid off. We were nowhere near the title, Bournemouth have smashed it, we were quite close to automatic promotion but actually finished in 5th place, that was enough for a playoff spot. We had to play Huddersfield there who we destroyed across the course of two legs but then the final was a tough one playing Leeds who were recently relegated I believe it was a 1-0 win with Noosa getting the goal and Jordan Gabriel got sent off after 29 minutes so we had to play the majority of the game with 10 men but we managed to get over the line a great run of form here from February seemed to do the trick but no matter what happened we have been promoted and it's been a great season for our players Joe Gelhart the best player in our team with 29 goals in 41 appearances on loan from Leeds we've gone up to the Premier League and he will be staying in the championship. Reese Williams has done well on loan. Kasper Kozlowski was very dangerous in the midfield with six goals and 11 assists in only 40 appearances. Daniel Ruiz was very impressive, now wanted by Bournemouth and Burnley. And we've also got this kid from the academy, Rafferty Rob. I'm not quite sure he's ready for our first team yet, but he's looking very promising. Another good young gem to come out of the academy, like we had with Max Bird. Maybe in the future we can sell him on for a big profit. Carabao Cup and FA Cup, nothing really to note. But look, it's been a very good season. Season. We now get one final year of this rebuild. We'll be spending that in the Premier League and my only aim is just not to get relegated. Even if we do get relegated, I just hope we get more than the 11 points that Derby got all those years ago. But we're going to need some transfers to make this team anywhere near ready to survive in the Prem. Okay, so we have plenty of incomings this year as we did last season. One that I didn't mention though that we actually signed last year with Flynn Downs. I feel like I made an offer for him, forgot about him, simulated the season. It looks like he came in but maybe never got registered. No idea what what's gone on there. Maybe we signed him after a deadline or something. I'm not sure. But either way, he is now in our team. Two of our loan leads from last season have signed permanently. We've got Reese Williams on a free deal from Liverpool. A great season last time. We get him on a free, a player that can get better yet. And he's valued at now 25 million despite us getting him on a free deal, which is insane business. And Nat Phillips has also signed permanently from Bournemouth. We've offered him a contract after his one at Bournemouth expired. He was good for us last year. Hopefully he'll be good for us again. And at centre-back, with Williams, Toti, Phillips and Cashin. We've got plenty of good options there now. We signed a couple of Manchester City players on a free. The first one being Brazilian right back Jan Kuto, who looks like a phenomenal option and is definitely our best in that position with Cedric getting older now. We needed two right backs. We have got Gabriel and Kuto, who was on loan in the championship with Burnley last year. Played for Gladbach in the 
Bundesliga, Girona in the Spanish divisions as well. This is a player with clearly a lot of talent, potential to get better still, and a great sign-in on a free, I must say. Another one that Man City let go on a free was James McAtee, who had spent a season out on loan with Sheffield United in the Championship a few seasons ago, and since then was never really given a crack in Man City's first team, played a bit for their second team, but he's now available as a free agent. Our scouts rated him, so we've bought him in as a depth option in midfield, and he's now valued at £20 million. Pounds. He's on quite a lot of wages though, so maybe he is less of a depth option and more of a regular starter. But we didn't stop there. We kept raiding Manchester City. We bought in this man on a free, Carlos Borges. He came out of the Man City Academy, spent some time on loan in the Championship for a few seasons, was really good for Preston last year, but Man City decided not to extend his deal, was available as a free agent. We picked him up. I really think with his physical attributes, the pace, the agility and the acceleration, he could be really dangerous cutting in on that left foot. He's got a good long shot. He can dribble and I feel like he could actually be a Premier League level player. A 22 year old Portuguese national that we've got on a free from Man City seems like another bit of top business. And our final end of contract signing for this rebuild was Seku Koita, who we picked up from RB Salzburg. Never really got too much game time there, but is clearly a talented striker, was let go. Our scouts rated him. We've bought him in to be a depth option up front because we've actually bought in two pretty high level strikers, I'd say, to compete for that position. The first one is Koita, the Mali international, but then he'll be competing with another African up front, Victor Boniface, the Nigerian 25 year old who's strong, tall, good in the air and quick. He's also a good finisher and strong mentally. We signed him from Union SG out in Belgium where he's been scoring a few goals. 9.5 mil was quite expensive, but with him and Koita up front, that's some good competition for that striker position. And we finally got someone on a permanent after I think four seasons of loaning in a striker. And finally, we've got a long-term option at left back. He's injured for now, but we'll come back soon it is Leicester's Luke Thomas, a 25 year old who we signed for 8.5 million. He was on the transfer list, clearly isn't good enough for Leicester, but for us, he comes in as one of our best options at left back. 25 years of age, could get better with regular game time, so hopefully it will work out for him at our team. And that's our team completed ahead of our final season as Derby manager. Baxter still stays as our best goalkeeper. Kuto, Williams, Toti, and Luke Thomas is our back line with Gorian, who I didn't show. Why didn't I show you him? We have just signed him as well from Tigres for three million pounds after some great seasons for them. He's a Uruguayan central midfield option who can also play defensive midfield. He comes in as a star player and one of the best players in our team, so I can't believe I didn't mention him, but he's at the base of midfield with Kozlowski in front and Jason Knight, who's been with us since the start here in this Derby team. We've also got Nusa, Ruiz and Koita with some very good depth options on the bench. Whether this is enough to stay up, I don't know. It's certainly a relegation level team, but maybe we can get lucky and make it out. It's going to be hard, but in our final season, we're crossing our fingers and hopefully we'll get more than 11 points. And it's a season that I could only have dreamed of. Genuinely, I assumed we would get relegated, maybe just survive, but we are, what, 11 points clear of a relegation zone? We got 46 points, lost 20 games, didn't draw many, but we did win 14, which is quite impressive, beating all the teams you'd expect us to beat. Those relegation clashes between the other teams teams in these positions were really important and we managed to win a big chunk of them. But more importantly, maybe for Derby fans, is we were runners up in the FA Cup. I don't know the story of that yet. We'll have a look in a second. But one thing I have noticed is Middlesbrough aren't in the Prem. So Max Bird and Bayek, who left us for Middlesbrough, are now finding themselves in the Championship while we're out here enjoying ourselves in the Prem. So jokes on them really for leaving. But what a run it was in the FA Cup. The quarterfinal, we played Man City and beat them in extra time with homegrown player Rafferty Rob coming on off the the bench and scoring twice despite never really playing in the Premier League. We then beat Liverpool 2-1 in the semi-final. Not an easy match at all. Kozlowski and Koita getting the goals there and then we unfortunately did lose to Chelsea in the FA Cup final. We were lucky to even take it to extra time. Jan Kuto scoring in the 94th minute but then Matthias Tell and Raspadori put the nails in the coffin in extra time. Won 4-2 for Chelsea but I'm certainly happy with this. If we look in terms of our survival push it looks like January we were very good, but also we had a great run in March, which I think really helped us in our survival bid. There was a 6-2 win against Leicester in there as well. It was a tricky start for us, but it looks like a win against Aston Villa at home really kicked off our season. And in terms of our best performers, let's see if there are any surprises. I mean, Rafferty Rob looked good, but Carlos Borges here, the one that we got for free from Man City, is now valued at about £38 million, got 11 goals and 7 assists for a Derby team in the Prem. 
Very impressive from him. He's getting quicker as well. It looks like his physical attributes make him deadly in the in-game engine. Seku Koita, who I really thought would be the backup to Victor Boniface, ended up being the starter up front, and he scored 24 goals in 37 Prem appearances, one of the top goal scorers in the Prem, and was a big part in keeping us up. Luke Thomas looking good as well. Daniel Ruiz and Baxter also doing great. This is a team that started with us out in League One. And whilst there has been some squad overhaul, the likes of Jason Knight are still with us. Cashin as well, Louis Sibley. There are players here that have been with us for a while and are contributing. And I think this rebuild has been massively successful. Getting to the Prem, staying up for the season and also getting to an FA Cup final. Making the facilities better, the coaching and the recruitment. Predicted 20th, we have said no to that and finished in a very respectable, what was it, 13th place in the end. Definitely one of the more challenging rebuilds that we've done. Not as many star players bought in, but certainly some great business on those free transfers. That's the way you need to go if you are managing in the lower divisions. Getting some loans, getting some free transfers, and when you get to the Prem, then you can start thinking about some permanent deals. But there we go. If you have enjoyed the video, smash the like button. Let me know who you want to see next. And I'll see you next time. Thank you and goodbye.